Chapter 7, for verily there was a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. The previous system, the Levitical system, is abandoned not because it was weak, it's because the people are weak, because it was unprofitable. Disannulling, that's a very strange word. That's the same word that's going to be used in chapter 9 about putting away sin. Just as Christ has put away sin, that same word, that priesthood has been put away. That's a shock to Jews today. It's a shock to, Mel- to uh, me- what we call Messianic Jews. There are many, many Messianic Jews that love the Lord Jesus Christ, that have accepted him, but can't let go of the old system. Disannulling means to abolish. And in chapter 9, verse 26, it's the same verb used as Christ putting away sin. His death, Jesus' death, has put away the law for two reasons. Weakness, because it could not impart strength or justification. And it's unprofitable. It could not impart life. You can't get life from the law. The law did not give life. It could only show us the need for a solution to life. So the priesthood that is after the law can only be temporary. It was intended to be temporary. And here it's declared uh, replaced. It's been disannulled. This is a clear statement that the law has been put away. There's still people today that love the Lord Jesus Christ but feel they have to keep the Torah. They still have the 613 knots and all that. Having that just to celebrate the history, that's one thing. It's quite another to be relying on that in any sense of the term. This new priesthood was essential. If the law were still in effect, Jesus could not be priest because he wasn't a Levite. He was from the tribe of Judah. He was not eligible in a sense. He could be a priest only because the law has been put away. That's all been the separation. He, he, you know, he's from the tribe of Judah, not Levi. So the writer here again making the point that the law itself didn't perfect anything. It showed us the need for perfection, but it couldn't perfect anything. It's probably a lie. I just, I'm just talking to you here. You take your car in, and they have an electronic device that'll tell you what's wrong with it. It doesn't fix it. It just tells you where to look, so to speak, right? It's a diagnostic tool. The law, in a sense, is a diagnostic tool. It shows us our need for a Savior. But that, don't confuse that with the repair. And uh, so, anyway. Also in chapter 7, it said, By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. The word testament there, diatheke, it's covenant and testament is the same word in the Greek. New covenant, New Testament, Old covenant, Old Testament. It's the same thing. The word testament, though, in our vernacular, carries with it the idea that it's a a set of promises that become executed at the death of the testator. So in that sense, it really fits Jesus Christ, as we'll see shortly. But the word covenant and testament are identical in the Greek. This is the first time here in chapter 7, it was the first time, a total of 17 times, uh, this word is used 33 times in the entire New Testament, half of them here in this epistle. The security to make good this new covenant is Jesus Christ himself. He ministers in a better sanctuary, better covenant, with, uh, built upon better promises. He's not, he's not officiating in the sanctuary they were used to, a sanctuary made with hands. He's got a better covenant. He's not under the old covenant, a new covenant. That's the whole theme here, built on better promises. And then we have this Key verse. Many people regard this as the key verse in the whole epistle. Wherefore he, Jesus Christ, is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Muhammad is not alive. He's dead. Muhammad isn't busily spending the rest of his energies on your behalf. I'm drawing a strange comparison, perhaps. But there's, there's, there's there's, there's no religion that has a man that is now raised from the dead that's spending his time praying for you. He's able to save them to the uttermost. That's quite a word. And this, Many people call this the high watermark of the, of the entire New Testament. Jesus is not dead. He's, on, he's not on the cross. He's not lying in the grave. He arose from the dead. So our emphasis is on the living Christ. This verse emphasizes, he ever liveth for what? To pray for you. Does he have access to his father? I would say so. (laughs) 